Scary thing? I, well, I, I put that as, a, as an idea. We should test it and see if that is. Okay. Sorry. Do you have a name of these Cameron, 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 this is me testing the microphone. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm saying words into the microphone. Um, I don't know where you put the little card. Saying words into the microphone. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh shoot, sorry. No, we're good. No, we're good. Just leave it like that. Yeah. Is it. I think it's the back microphone? Uh. Do we know? The cam. or the microphone should be coming from that, like, phone microphone. Okay. Okay. Can the screen go off or no? I have no clue. I. Right. Just. Here, now. Just leave it. <laughs> Alright, alright.
this neck is high. That's a red swimmer. Now it is. His friends, his family, some of those many people whose lives are different because they've had Kenneth in it, and some of those who feel their world was changed by him. As I prepared for tonight, I knew that I would be the first person to stand in front of you all and try to put words to his life and death. And I tried repeatedly to find the right ones, as if I might somehow be able to explain away the pain of grieving, or rationalize an explanation to somehow make this less possible, much less the point. We're here to sit with our grief and to name it and to call it grief. We're here to recognize that Kenneth's life was life without any exception. His life, unique and sacred in all that means. We're here because his death is tragedy and none of us are prepared to cope with it alone, so we're here together. In a moment, we will present a tribute to Kenneth's life, um, share a video of the eulogy prepared by a faculty member who was moved by their time with Kenneth, and then we'll invite anyone who would like to share their memories of Kenneth to take the microphone. For anyone who might like to do so, we have no cards here and tissues spread around the forum. If at any point you become overwhelmed and need to step away, we have a bathroom back to my right, pardon me, back to my right through this building here. And we have a guest book and resources um, from counseling services here at the table, as well as a member of counseling services back here to my right, available if you want to connect with someone directly. There is a Facebook group, the QR code here, that you can scan to be added to a Facebook group called Sharing Memories of Kenneth. If you want to take a moment to scan it, I'd like to ask you afterwards, thank you, to put your phones away and put them on silent out of respect for the night. And in a moment, we'll start the tribute.
if I can invite up Joy Lane from the College of Engineering to share a tribute prepared by the faculty and staff. Hello, my name is Joy Lane, and I have the great privilege of teaching mechanical engineering here at this school. I know we're not supposed to have favorites, but there is one class that will always hold the most special place in my heart, and that is the first class I ever taught on this campus, an introductory ME lab, a hands-on course for incoming students to dive into all things mechanical. Turns out, interacting with students that are working through a problem in real time can be a great way to get to know them. I can't say exactly what it was that bonded that group so closely. There was a kind of camaraderie that quarter that I've yet to experience exactly since. Maybe because it was the first time back on campus for students after COVID. Maybe because they were freshmen and it was their first quarter too. Maybe it was all the last that came as we reviewed lab results together and happily corrected mistakes. That first class has remained close to me throughout my years here at Poly and I still mentor a few of them now as they navigate internships and job applications. If those are the best of times, then the hardest has been this loss. The name Kenneth always stood out to me. It sounds like a grown man's name. <laughs> he didn't go by Ken or Kenny. This young man grew into the name Kenneth and it suited him. In that first quarter in 2021, we were still wearing face masks, but that didn't stop Kenneth from having a lot to say. <laughs> Every class, he had something new to tell me. His eyes would shine bright above his mask so I could always tell that he was smiling. Kenneth was both kind and clever, which made talking to him about any subject a joy. In the minutes before class started, he would excitedly discuss the stock market performance and his share, <laughs> share his latest investing strategies. I am glad I didn't take his advice to buy Rivian at $100 a share. <laughs> He would tell me about his latest outdoor adventures, about the concepts he was learning in physics, how he could apply it to new technologies, and please could I give him some tips to make it through Cal 3. In that lab, I required students to write formal lab write-ups. I could always tell when Kenneth was the team member that wrote the conclusion, because he would touch not only on the lessons that he came away with, but on the teamwork required to get there. I hope he doesn't mind, but I have brought a brief excerpt of one of our only individual reflections because I think it will highlight the good character, humility, and work ethic that Kenneth valued. This was a quick reflection on the first project we did, building a functional bridge out of uncooked spaghetti and masking tape. They were asked to write about the design methods and practice and then how the group that was selected at random worked together on the very first day. While some students took the opportunity to make excuses and maybe tear down their team, this was Kenneth's response. Quote. Oh. So fortunate to have a few strong sessions. We all communicated well and had similar work ethics. We used the same group ethic and practice ethics to build on each other and work hard to get to know one another and not only get to know each other. This team was definitely more effective than most other groups. In every class, the main group was always new. We had to take things one lesson at a time to get to know them. My team worked hard to develop a healthy relationship. Last year and a half of COVID, 
day we gather with heavy hearts to bid farewell to a cherished member of our community, Kenneth Taylor. Though his time with us was brief, the impact of the community resonates in a lifetime. Kenneth was a soul filled with boundless curiosity and an insatiable thirst for experiencing all that life has to offer. Whether it was exploring distant trails or chasing the horizon, he approached each day with an infectious enthusiasm that inspired all who knew him. His adventurous spirit is a beacon of light, guiding us to embrace the beauty and wonder of the world around us and challenging us to grow. Kenneth possessed a rare kindness, the kind that touched the lives of everyone he encountered, and he had a way of making others feel seen and valued. In a world often filled with noise and distraction, Kenneth was a gentle reminder of the power of empathy, of being thoughtful, and what it means to be genuine. He was a joy to have in class and to work with, witty and thoughtful, with a strong sense of who he was and what he thought was important. He actively engaged in our community, sharing his thoughts and listening intently to others' perspectives and asking insightful questions. Beyond his academic pursuits, Kenneth's love for life was clear to see. He cherished every moment, embracing opportunities for growth and exploration. His deep affection for his family, his reverence for the environment, and his genuine concern for the world around him were evident in everything he did. As we mourn his loss, let us remember the joy he brought into our lives and the lessons he taught us through his actions. A poem written in his memory. In the heart of verdant woods, where ancient trees stand tall, and whispers of the wind weave tales enchanting one and all. There lies a story, timeless and true, of nature's dance, of life and you. Beneath the dappled canopy, where sunlight softly streams, and rivers sing their melodies like oft remembered dreams, a story is told, each volume a chapter in the tale. Nature sings, the seasons change, an endless shifting blue. Yet in the ebb and flow, there's solace found in knowing that life's circle comes and goes around. For in the quiet moments beneath the stars' soft glow, we find the echo of what it truly means to grow. Let us cherish each moment, each breath that we draw, and tread lightly upon this earth, beholding all in awe. For in the tapestry of time, we play but a small part, a gentle beat within nature's vast heart. And when our journey's end draws near, may we look back with joy and never with fear. For in living well, in harmony with sea and land, we leave a legacy like so many grains of sand. So here's to the earth and the life that it gives, to the cycles of nature in which all things live. May we honor its wisdom and to each other tend, and find peace in knowing nothing is ever truly the end. Rest in peace, dear Kenneth knowing that we see your smile in the glint of each drop of dew and hear your laughter in the crash of each wave upon the shore. Thank you. From here, in just a moment, we'll invite anyone who would like to share their memories of Kenneth to come speak and share them. If you don't want to stand up front, if you still want to speak, just look at me and I will bring you the microphone. Again, we have no cards available on the table if anyone wants to prepare something ahead of time, and I'll pass those out. Before we move into sharing memories, I want to offer Walt Taylor, Kenneth's dad, the opportunity to speak. Just walking up here and seeing all that flannel, seeing all of you <laughs> love Kenneth. It's so meaningful. Thank you all. Um, today is a joy day filled with sadness, but, but also with joy. We were with Kenneth's uh, housemates and friends last night, and we were laughing at all the stories and the pranks and the, all the different stuff that. That all of those, all of you, did together 
Um, oh my gosh. You know, like looking at, as you heard me say when you, when you saw that video of him in that stupid kayak, right? <laughs> Talk about a kid who loved to live life on the edge and loved to live it to the fullest and loved to push boundaries. I would ask all of you to share those stories, if not tonight, then with each other going forward. I've got a couple to share. I could share them all night, but um, my first one is little little Kenneth. And even then he was Kenneth. That was, that's, that's Kimberly's fault. But, <laughs> um, he gave the best hugs. His little arms, I, I mean, I literally can feel them wrapped around me. His little arms around my shoulders and neck. He just, when he gave you a hug, you, you, you knew he gave it all. And then last summer he was home doing an internship with us, and um, and he and I started this, uh, we started running together every every Tuesday and Thursday evening. We would we'd go down to Columbia and we'd run, and he would tell me about his day, or we'd talk about, talk about the uh, you know, different things going on in his life. He would talk, and I would pay. <laughs> then we'd hop in the river and swim down, and he would crush me on a run, and I always took pride in getting him on a swim. But um, just what a what a wonderful for me. I mean, just to spend that time with my then twenty year old son was amazing, and I was so excited about doing it again this summer. And I gotta admit, I am uh, I've spent this whole week looking back, looking at pictures and videos and listening to his voice and I have not yet been able to, to look forward and think about all of the things he won't be there for. One thing I do know is he loved Cal Poly. He, we were, we've told this many times, but he looked at a lot of different places and you know, not that, not that. He came here with Kimberly and that was the first one where she was allowed to actually buy him a t-shirt. <laughs> so he put on that t-shirt and they got the picture by the Mustang and did all that. And, um, and then every time anybody asked, I said he was living his best cop all his life. He was surfing and skiing and apparently going to class sometimes. He <laughs> just loved being here. Um, and I just want to say thank you to all of you um, for for the love you've shown him and you're showing us and for supporting him, especially to his roommates who are just so awesome. Marina, thank you. So I just would ask you to, if not tonight, just share those stories, share those memories with us. I think you'll see there are bubbles um, that blow up to heaven and there are wildflowers Please to plant as you go forward and just think of Kenneth and hopefully the world will take root and you'll take just, just a little more of the, of the joy that Kenneth brought to, brought to me and all of all. From here, if anyone would like to share their memories of Kenneth, I'll welcome you to do so. And if you'd like me to bring you the microphone.
just want to absorb everything and love hearing all the stories. I will tell you that it was very difficult to be here. We probably wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for my friend, Kathy. We've known her since fourth grade. Friends are so important. And I can tell you, we wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for her this week. As a mom, you try to teach your children right from wrong, the consequences of their choices, empathy. I can tell you that from he's, the time he started school here, he went home in the summertime, he was teaching me. He pointed it out. No, Mom, that's not OK. If I put something in recycling that doesn't go <laughs> If I had the refrigerator open when I poured my drink, you know, no, that was enough. So he, he was teaching me, he really taught us about right and wrong. And that's because of the friends that he associated himself with. All of you in this school, from when he was little, all of you have shaped who Kenneth is. And, um, couldn't be more grateful. He's so much deeper than I even understand. Um, his love of the outdoors. That's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see some really happy kids, put some young kids on a mountain bike and put them in the woods. Oh my gosh, they just, they just love that. We would go on a hike and stop for lunch, and Kenneth and Katrina would go and just play. I mean, some people, it didn't look like there was anything there. I often said to Ken, to Walt, we had infinite time. I wonder when they would ever say, let's go home, because they just, just ate it up. They just loved nature and loved to be outside, and they would just, they could think of a million things to do. Um, Kenneth uh, was always up in a tree, <laughs> up on rocks, always up. I'm remembering a story that his girlfriend that he had for uh, all through high school. Um, his uh, girlfriend's mom was dropping out her off at this park for to meet Kenneth. And they get there, and she says, well, where's Kenneth? <laughs> she goes, I don't know. He's probably up in a tree. <laughs> and she looked, and she said, he is in a tree. <laughs> of course he's up in a tree, yeah. Um, like they were saying earlier, Kenneth loved to think outside the box. That was his thing, and he was part of the Surf Rider Club. And part of the surf part writer club for Halloween said you need to dress up for Halloween as a marine animal. <laughs> so kind of immediately called me, said I need my gorilla suit <laughs> and an inner tube. <laughs> 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 I <felt> like that. <laughs> memories like oh, when Kenneth was five years old and I don't know what happened but Walt came upstairs a naval officer so I'm trying to pick I'm trying to have you picture just a pretty harsh man right <laughs> naval officer and he came up and he was angry and I knew he was angry because he said I'm angry <laughs>
and those five words when you decide those five words were it's not my responsibility <laughs> <laughs>
This is a shoe. <laughs> I'm hoping the roommates will tell um, the story about this, um, but apparently he wore these every single day. I um, He sent a picture immediately of a hole, like poor me, look at my shoe. <laughs> So I get on the computer, right, to look up some shoes for Kenneth, and Walt said, don't you do it. <laughs> so then Kenneth, you know, this was, this was him, right? I don't, and then he didn't want any new shoes anymore. This is what he wanted to do, and there's some funny stories I didn't know about these shoes. Um, uh, the last thing I wanted just to share with you all is, um, so last year, he called us. Just think it's sweet. And he said, hey, I want to think of myself as being really independent, you know, living my life out here, being very independent and doing this. He said, but I couldn't be doing any of this without you both. And that was it. I just to get that from your child, just you know how sweet and it just meant all the world to me. Anyway, I'm I'm more than touched that you all are here, and it helps a great a great deal with our pain. Thank you. start passing out some note cards. Would anyone like the microphone? children's kids, children's friends, or your children are never always aware how their friends may affect you. But it's, um, it's always the wonderful, really wonderful kids, and sometimes the littlest thing that they do have a long-term impacts. And one of the things that stood out about Kevin was his enthusiasm. And when you'd ask him, when you ask many people, how are they doing today? They're fine. How are you doing today? Okay. You ask Kenneth how he's doing. It's great. It's <laughs> wonderful. I'm fantastic. <laughs> and last summer, we're sitting out talking, or before we start talking, he's on the hood of his car. Come back. My daughter had been, been doing something. And I asked him, how you doing? I'm fantastic. Oh. You like to have some people while they're having a great day. Why? Why not? And I told him about it, I appreciate it. And being an old jaded guy at work sometimes, noticed on a Saturday you're doing great, but at work, you know, people, how you doing? Not bad. And I made a note after that that when I meet the interns or the younger people, I've always thought I can. Always make sure I do great. You do wonderful. I don't say it to upper management because I don't want them to think things are going that great. <laughs> but in the last two years or so, Kenneth's had that impact of just the little things. 
I hope when people think of the Kenneth in the future, they think of their day, I hope it'll be wonderful. I think it'll be fantastic. And I hope the reason will be why not? It was a fantastic gift. I can't imagine what you're for. happened my first our freshman year and I saw Kenneth like every day because he lived right across the hall from me um, and and there was this one night it was after uh, the midnight breakfast and I stayed up with him and, and, and Britain all night like we were up we stayed awake until 6 30 a.m. and we watched the sun rise and we're like wow oh look the sun's the sun's up now um we've been sitting here for six and a half hours just talking and and i don't even i don't remember like what what like how we were talking for that long i don't remember everything but um but you know one of the things he said, he's like, Paige, do you want to go on a run at 8? And I was like, man, I've been up for like 22 hours. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> and, and I was also like, I'm like way slower than you. Like, that's, like I, I don't know. And he's like, no, no, don't worry. Like, I'll, I'll go at your pace. But I was like, no, I can't do it. <laughs> um, and then the other thing he asked me was, um, do you want to go do you want to go rappelling with me? And and I had never put on a harness at all at this point. Like I've never. I think I've maybe climbed like four times in my life at that point. And and I was like, you know, he really he really tried to sell me on it. It took it took a little while to convince me to do that, but but. He, I went, I agreed, and I was really scared because it was my first time doing this and it was over a 120 foot waterfall. <laughs> and before we went though, he like showed me how to do it. He, we went to the second floor of the building and he just like, just kind of jumped off the edge and showed me how to repel. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess I can do that. And, and so maybe a week later we went, um, with a few other people. And I remember like standing at the edge of the cliff, just like, I couldn't like, I couldn't keep walking backwards. And him and another person, they were like, okay, Paige, you really don't have to do this, but you really think you should, and you can back out at any time. And he said, well, actually, that's not true. Once you get far enough, you can't back out. <laughs> so, so the, well, I ended up doing it. And at the, at the bottom, uh, I was like still, it was, it was really, it was like a great experience. I was so happy that, I, that he had asked me to go, that I had gone. And at the bottom, like my my hands were like shaking so much, I couldn't even like unlock the the carabiner from the harness. I was just like stuck there, and he and he came down and like saw me struggling. He was like, okay, like, I'll help you out. And I fell in the water as we were like, <laughs> he's like, oh, I should have caught that on camera. And then I did it. Then we did it again, and I fell in the water again this time. And he was just like laughed at me. <laughs> And um, and uh, that night when we were like when we went back to the top to gather up everything, um, we were just talking and and I was saying like I don't know anything about this like I can't ask people about this like I don't know that many people right now and he said that's that's what you have us for and. Um, 
and after that first year I I didn't see him as frequently as I had wanted to but when I did see him we would talk for a really really long time and catch up and and like that you know I I'm like so afraid of everything but he really is all the adventures he'd go on and like all these things that he did and talked about and all the conversations I had with him really really convinced me finally that I that I could like embrace fear and like do things instead of running away from them all the time and I never uh, like I wish I could I could thank him for doing that
I'd like to, um, on that note, I would also like to share with the parents and the family and everyone. I think um, someone stole my lights off the bike, off my bike recently. <laughs> and luckily my credit card covered it and I got one back. So I choose to think that it was him messing with me, knowing that I get it back, no harm, no foul. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so on that, anyway. Um, I feel like Kenneth, when he looked at you, he figured you out. Whatever, whatever you are, whoever you are, he figured you out almost immediately. And he did that in part because he probably wanted to prank you. <laughs> so I have a little list of moments that I would like to share. Um, and I'd like to add context by saying um, things that scare me are fire, loud noises, explosions, <laughs> and things that Kenneth loved were fire, loud noises. <laughs> so one of the first things he did when we shared a kitchen in our PCB apartment was to um, insert a fork into the microwave, <laughs> which we discovered was not allowed because it's metal in the microwave. It turns out, however, that you can put a spoon in the microwave because it's not sharp. So like regular clockwork, he would put a spoon in the microwave and like time me as I ran to turn it off. <laughs> like I don't believe that it was, it was safe. Um, but apparently it is. Um, I found an automated soap dispenser and filled it with hand sanitizer. And anything that was automated, he did not think was superior. So he decided to um, purchase a lighter with a long, with a long lighter and insert the lighter into the automated soap dispenser <laughs> and then light it on fire, <laughs> which created like a, like a handheld torch for a second, but it wasn't powerful enough. So he decided to retrieve his uh, portable oxygen dispenser and dispense oxygen into the hand sanitizer thing and then light that on fire. And that was much bigger, he was <laughs> satisfied almost until he realized he could just directly burn the oxygen. So he tried to tie the dispenser of the oxygen open so that he could light it and just create a blowtorch, which I don't know if that worked out, but he tried. Um, another moment, not less explosive, but I purchased a large vat of Nutella that I was very excited about. And I set very clear rules about the Nutella. It was very, like, like eat the Nutella. That was, don't do anything else. Um, so he decided to, uh, I keep using the word insert, because I think, I don't know. He decided to insert into the Nutella uh, an entire orange and then hide it enough that I didn't, I didn't, it was a rumor to me. <laughs> and so because I had heard this rumor, he then took another orange and set it on top of the Nutella, walked up to me with the bucket, reached out and picked out the orange and said, oh my gosh, it's the orange you were thinking about. And I said, oh, I'm glad that didn't actually happen. And later we were eating Nutella with potato chips and Cameron uncovered the orange. <laughs> and he then, after eating the first decoy orange entirely with the peel, he decided the second one was too much, so he put it in our freezer, and it still remains there. <laughs> um, I, I share all this, you know, it, also with the context of he, he, as long as he knew you, the other side of it was he really knew how to treat you well. You know, and we all have stories of of Kenneth where we want to do something and he says yes that's a great idea like I have never I hadn't swam in five years or something and I was like yeah I should do a triathlon he was like okay so I asked him do you want to go swimming at ASI at, five, uh, at 8 a.m. on Saturday you know as in please tell me no this is a bad idea and he was like yeah let's try so I, I now swim <laughs> um, my roommates were per getting together, my roommates and my girlfriend were getting together to buy me a trash can because I'm, I 
like that a lot. <laughs> so um, I then, between the time that they had purchased it and I, it was my birthday, I brought it up again because I wanted to buy a trash can. And he had to persuade me not to buy this. So the way he came, he, the, the excuse he made was, no, 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 I don't like change. No new things in the house. Do not buy this. And then we left the kitchen. So I had to assume that he was serious about that. Um, I'm just, I'm grateful for all of the times that he messed with us and made us smile and laugh. And all of the times that he got to know us so well that he supported us and loved us and um, just was such a big presence in all of our lives. So thank you all for celebrating his joy with us. Hi everyone, my name is Kamran. I was actually their neighbor last year in Foxen and TCB. Uh, if you walk out of that room to your right, it's a little corner, and there's my room right there. Um, primary memory with Kenneth that I want to share with you guys today is I knew him since first year as well, and there's a lot of good memories just passing in the dorms and hanging out. But specifically last year when I moved into Foxen and was moving my stuff in, and I saw him, I was like, oh, what's up, Kenneth? How's it going? He's living here too. Um, I don't know, I had this like feeling of, oh, that's great. I, I just had somebody else in the building that's my roommate. We'll see how that goes. And every time I came back in the building, either for class or especially from a break, like Christmas break, spring break, anything, if he saw me, he would just completely stop and smile and, hey, come on, how's it going? And pull me aside and talk. And this extended to campus, this extended to off campus, it didn't, didn't matter, um, even earlier this school year. And I, I know that every time I saw him, it would just be a free five minutes of my day where I could just kind of like, He's my shoulders and just someone's gonna ask me how I'm doing and we'll like somebody else said earlier, we'll really listen and he'll really give you a good response. Um, and every time I walked by my walked back to my dorm, my apartment last year, I'd walk past Kenneth's room and there was always uh, you know, something drying. There's a kayak, there was a pair of shoes, there's a pair of boots, there's a tarp. It's a massive tarp, I remember that all the time. Um, and uh, every time I'd take somebody like a new friend or a parent that was visiting, it's all this. I'm like, ah, that's my neighbor, you know, he goes outside all the time, this is super cool stuff, and, you know, stuff's drying here. Um, yeah, so that was always nice coming back in and seeing the stuff. Oh, look, looks like Kenneth just got back from an adventure, so. Um, yeah, I was just seeing him, you know, guaranteed, like I said, five minutes of a, a check-in, a meaningful check-in where you could just talk about how you're doing and to listen, and you listen back, and uh, guaranteed a smile or two or three, and um, always left me feeling in a, in a positive way and better afterwards. And yeah, Kenneth just wanted, just wanted to just wanted to say that Kenneth was someone who made me extra realize the importance of checking in on others and using your ears more than your mouth. That's something I can definitely learn from too. So. <laughs> Sarah, and I have the absolute privilege of supervising Kenneth as a Polyscape's trip leader. Um, thank you all for being here. I have a couple of stories that I want to share um, in his memory. Uh, the first is that Kenneth always submitted his, his time for his time cards in military time. <laughs> and I'll never forget this. I mean, uh, just having to interpret it <laughs> is something that I will forever treasure. If he was, you know, I set the deadline weeks in advance, and if he's two minutes late, he would he would send me his time card and he would say, sent timidly, Kenneth Taylor. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we did interviews recently for new trip leaders here on campus, and Kenneth was the first to say that he would be there. Um, and he asks, is it formal? And I said, but of course. <laughs> and he shows up um, in a, a tie and a button-up shirt because he no shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a very informal interview, and he knew that. <laughs> um, and he told me, he said, Sarah, I think we need to get a stool with one wobbly leg 
and the interviewee needs to sit on the stool. <laughs> and we won't tell them that it has a wobbly leg, but we will just watch how they handle it. <laughs> and we will decide if this candidate has the mental strength <laughs> to be a polyscape strip leader. Um, but with those stories, you know, said, I just wanted to share that when I thought about what I should say about Kenneth, the only thing that came to mind was that he was magic. And for those of you, I don't know how well everybody knows Kenneth, but the smartest, most technically skilled person um, that I could like ever dream would lead trips on this campus. Um, he was so witty and so funny, and um, he taught me and taught the people in the program so much more than we could ever have hoped to teach him. And uh, the program will forever be better because Kenneth Taylor was in it. Thank you. privilege of being Kenneth's RA last year, and I want to um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to share probably my the first memory that I had with him. So Kenneth happened to be both my first challenge as an RA last year, but also one of my most hilarious memories. Um, last year around September, when we did uh, fire drills in the first week of the quarter, we had to evacuate all the residents. Um, Kenneth left his window open, which meant all of us could see into his room with all the pulleys and the kayaks. And I remember at the time thinking, like, wow, that's so cool. I also forgot um, that we were doing fire drills because the fire marshal was like, whose room is that? That's, that's a ton of fire violations right there. I like, no. And I didn't say anything, but they found out it was Kenneth, and they found out I was his RA. So <laughs> they're like, "You need to go. You need to go talk to him right now." And at that point, I didn't, I didn't really know him that well, so I was really worried how he'd react. Cause like, I don't want to break such like disappointing news so early in the year. Um, so, and, and then so I remember uh, talking to him, and I got a look at his room, and at the time, it was not only a testament to his love for the outdoors, but it was so obvious he was in the right major. I was like, this is a mechanical engineer. <laughs> um, and I remember telling him, hey, so uh, bad news, but I might have to write you up. And he was like, OK, I just have one question. I was like, yeah, of course. Can I have a certificate printed out saying that I'm your first ever write up? Because I want everyone to know. And this is just so cool. And at that point, I knew that Kenneth was going to be one of my, I think I can safely say he's probably my favorite resident <laughs> I've ever had. Um, and I'm just so grateful that our paths crossed and that I got to know such a kind and funny and brilliant person. And I don't think a day went by that he didn't make me laugh. And I'm just so glad that he shared his time with us here. Yeah, thank you so much for <laughs> And so I was willing to take like any jacket, anything to get warm. 
So Kevin was like, oh, like, I have an extra food in the car. So he goes to his truck, and like I said, I was willing to take anything, but after seeing this, I was a little bit nervous. Um, <laughs> he pulls out this bright red sweatshirt, and it says in all caps, I did not commit arson. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a very incriminating photo of me in his sweatshirt that says, I commit arson. Um, but another one was, I believe last year, in the beginning of the year, I think it was the beginning of this year, um, there was a fire that was started in school, and Mustang News posted about it, and it said that it was arson. And Kenneth goes in the comments, starts a very strong argument, and says, but it was not arson, da, da, da. <laughs> And people start replying. He's like, full on happy argument in the comments with <laughs> people. And he says, well, according to penal code, blah, 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 it was simply <laughs> recklessness. He was not arrested for arson. I've seen up to five seasons of Suits. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We were having a bonfire um, for Sir Friday one night, and Kenneth came fully prepared, like axe, wood, all the materials we needed. And I had my little camcorder that night, and a lot of the footage was really just Kenneth, like making this fire because it looked like it could just be like a really good horror movie. Um, so I thought that it was like very fitting of his character, and yeah, it was just a good night, but. And they stick to the fire stories. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I think that that was one of the funniest, just like most enjoyable things about him was just who he was as a person, but the the fire story is always funny. <laughs> so yeah. one of my first friends in the club and a big reason why I stuck with it and I'm so thankful for him for that. Um, he was such an amazing part of our club. He brought so much lively energy and adventure and just the craziest ideas. <laughs> um, uh, but one of my favorite memories of him was our freshman year Make Ways Film Festival. Um, well, before that, we uh, agreed that me and him and another friend, Aiden, um, wanted to create our own film uh, through the club. And so the three of us, like amateurs of cameras, kind of was great with the camera, and yeah, she taught me a lot. But um, we decided to go out and just shoot all these silly clips of Slow and our home and this place that we love so much. And it was just such an awesome time just going to MDO and kind of listening to all these some ocean clips um, and then doing it together and we had this deadline before we played that our co-presidents were like kept this over to us like we need this film to be done and we submitted it at 11 uh, p.m the, the night before it was due but um that's one of my favorite memories with him but anyways fast forward to when we were setting up for make waves um we had an hour before people were gonna show up, so we're like, let's go to Trader Joe's, we need some food, we need to feel ourselves. And so we all go to Trader Joe's, get some talkies, get some sandwiches, you know, normal food. And uh, we meet back at the car, and we see Kenneth, and he has seven bananas and a basil plant. <laughs> <laughs> and then he uh, proceeded to tell us that that basil plant really sucked and it just wasn't a good plant. <laughs> <week later. laughs> um, but yeah, fast forward a little bit further. Um, this past fall, we kicked off our core team meeting for Surf Rider and we had a little potluck and it was lovely. And, you know, we make pasta and salads and everyone brings their dishes and uh, Kenneth shows up with 40 bananas. <laughs> And then he proceeds to eat about nine of them. <laughs> um, yeah, those are just 
some stories that really touch on this character and how unique and hilarious he was, and he just brought literally like the best energy ever. Um, and I'm just so thankful for our community that Kenneth created in Surf Rider, and it's so evident that he created so many other communities in Slow and at home, and yeah, he just means so much to all of us, and I'm so thankful to know him. Hi everyone, um, my name is Kelsey. I also knew Kenneth through Surf Rider, um, and he really was just like an incredible part of our organization and the people that are here. It was just nothing short of a family to me. Um, but one of my most vivid memories of Kenneth that I just think is really funny and I've been looking back on is. Um, our first year we went camping up in Big Sur and I had never really met Kenneth before and we were like setting up our fire and eating dinner, like classic hot dogs. A lot of these are food related. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then Kenneth, like, we're, we were camping, no one brought anything nice and Kenneth brought out like a marble cheese cutter specifically for cutting cheese and then he pulled out like three different really nice kinds of cheese and we were all eating hot dogs and it was just really sweet and I was like I didn't expect you to bring a marble cheese cutter to the fashion and he was like well I'm not going to cut it with a pocket knife <laughs> This is a classy event. Um, and I just really wanted to be his friend. <laughs> He's just a wonderful person. And like, he would always be like the backbone of every event we threw. He would always figure everything out. And we love him a lot. We miss him a lot. Thank you. So uh, Audrey was talking about that video, and I just wanted to give another point of view. Um, so my like girlfriend last year was the president of Surf Rider Club, and so, like, sadly she can't be here today. But then uh, two years ago for that Make Waves Festival, she was like the event coordinator, so she was in charge of putting on Surf Rider. And I really remember like the night before, she was like, the freshmen were in charge of the video. <laughs> and Kenneth said he was going to put the video together, and I don't have the video. <laughs> And then finally it got there at like 11.58, and she was like so stressed, that event was going on. She was like, oh my god, the freshman put together this video, I don't even know if it's good, I don't even have time to watch it. And then, so I think it just got like put in the queue. And then so she's like running around all day, and I'm you know, trying to help out, and then we like sit down, and it's finally time for like the make waves for the festival. Everyone's there, you know, it's the sun is set, and then there are video shows, and then there's some really nice like nature clips and some beautiful narration by Audrey. And then we're just like, I was like, oh my god, this video is really good. And so we pulled it off. Like the freaking three freshmen. Really <laughs> they did a great job. And it was like, yeah, it was like short and sweet. And I just remember really being like taken aback by how like, OK, it's just like these three silly freshmen. But they were able to really create something really beautiful and meaningful. and. I, from there, it was just like, wow, like, you know, the club is in, re in really good hands, you know, like, Kenneth and Audrey and, I, and Aiden, you know, like, hey, like, these are freshmen, but, you know, with Kenneth's help and Kenneth's lead, you know, they, they're going to be able to do, like, great things in the future. And, like, I really remember how proud my, my girlfriend was of those, like, of the three of them. And so I'm, like, really sad that, you know, Kenneth won't be able to, like, contribute more in the future because he was really like capable of great things. So yeah. I love hearing all the Kenneth stories. Oh, I, I have so many so I'll try and pick a few. Um, always with Kenneth and I the the plans always came ahead of the preparation. The ambition was always also well ahead of the preparation and the plans. Um, like, I, I remember the second time I ever went deep climbing, I think it might have been Kenneth's first time deep climbing, we decided to do a 12 seat. Um, yeah, because we didn't know climbing, that was, uh, that was a poor choice. Um, and our success on the route reflected um, the quality of that choice. Uh, but we had a good time, we had a good time, that was, that was a scary moment though. 
But um, last year, over on the weekend, it's a long weekend, it's President's Day, we went backcountry skiing in the Eastern Sierras. And I, I like to come through guidebooks and find just the craziest looking stuff. And then Kent would just never say no to it. I mean, he wouldn't even look at it. He would just say, oh, yeah, let's go do it. And so we're, we're driving all the way out there, and we're, we're getting ready to actually pull into the campsite for the night. He's like, so what are we actually, what are you doing out here? And, um, well, it turns out, the problem with both of us is we're in, we're in over our heads. So we're, we're way out there, and uh, we get up the next morning. We didn't drive as far down the road as we thought. He's like, I have a truck. I have chains. We're going to make it. <laughs> we did not make it. <laughs> um, so we get to, like, for those of you that know the picture of Various, is what that was, south of the Buttermilk Boulders. And we're trying to do this line about six miles away. And we've done some hiking in the past. We've been on the mountain for the year. We're like, six miles. We got it. We did not got it. Um, there's a local there who gave us, gave us something new to do. And um, we're growing up to do this, this new line. I had this vision of making a video out of it. You know, kind of love taking pictures and video and everything. I love skiing, so I was like, perfect. We'll, we'll make a video. And we stopped for a little snack break. And I was like, oh, we need to get some B-roll. I was like, I'll get a video of you eating snacks, B-rolling out. I was like, just, just like, look up and be like, look normal. I don't know if any of you have asked him to look normal before. Um, he wouldn't do it. I have a great video on my phone of him eating fruit snacks like this. <laughs> Direct eye contact with the camera, that's fantastic. Um, I've done a few big road trips with him. I went out to Colorado, that's where I'm from. Um, so, so many good conversations on the road. And you would, you would say something that made a lot of sense, and he would agree with you, but he would just argue with you. <laughs> just because he could. Just because he could. Like, he was, he is, if I ever think, whenever someone says devil's advocate, the first person I think of is Ken. It didn't matter how outlandish the opposing opinion was, he would take it up and he would, he would defend it. And I don't think I ever won one of those arguments, ever. I, he was so good at arguing. But we're, one of the, one of the road trips I really remember was last summer, start of the summer taking him, or going with him back home. We were gonna climb Mount Rainier. And uh, I remember helping him pack his truck up. And um, this is a kayak story. And we're trying to strap the kayak to the top. And he, I don't even remember what he was trying to do. He had some crazy solution that involved one, two, three, four, five ratchet straps. <laughs> well, five ratchet straps. So that he wanted two to come off the back of the kayak one to go down under the truck, and then one to each crossbar. And I was like, well, oh, that's a little goo for you, but we'll give it a go, we'll give it a try. So we make it to about Paso Robles, and um, <laughs> boom, all of a sudden, pulling off the road, the ratchet strap in the front just snapped. Just completely snapped. And I was like, oh, maybe we should find something instead of a ratchet strap. And he's like, no, 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 I can make this work. I can make this work. And so he, he, he ties his best knot. He ties it the back of knot in case the first knot slips um, to tie the broken ratchet strap back together. We made it another 15 minutes. And then I'm, I'm honestly surprised the truck didn't take any damage. The whole thing exploded. The buckle came apart. <laughs> At this point, we were, we were just watching the ratchet strap go from like this in the wind to like this in the wind to like this in the wind. And then eventually it just snapped. And so we ended up duct taping the kayak <laughs> to the roof on the crosswalks. And we drove 1,200 miles all the way back to Washington, <laughs> which, was, uh, which was great. And um, I always remember when we were in the, the ridge line, we'd always wave at the ridge line drivers. He's like, Ken, they're not looking at you. He's like, no, no, they are. It's like, a ridge line thing. You would get it. You understand. He's like, this is, this is a real truck. He's like, you know those rams? Not real trucks. <laughs> Oh, that was so funny. He would, he would, he would go up, he went up to, he just approached a random bridge line, I don't even know where we were, it may have been Bishop. And he just started talking to him about his truck. Just approached this, this total stranger, and he's like, hey, dude, nice truck. <laughs> uh, no, I, I couldn't be there. That was, that was so funny. It made me laugh so many times. I remember, on, he, he also made me frustrated a number of times. Um, one of our most ambitious adventures was the first time we went on Mount Rainier. Okay, was there. Um, we, we made it to the first day, we walk up to Muir Camp, um, and this is all pretty easy stuff, we're just walking on the snow at this point, spend the night, and then the next day it's like fairly dangerous, you gotta cross crevasses on the glacier, and there are a bunch of skills that we learn 
spent a lot of time learning this stuff in advance. And, and the National Park Service asks that you climb and then there's other routes before you go on Mount Rainier. Um, you probably also was just going, we didn't climb any of the routes that they recommended before going on Mount Rainier. We're like, we know how to climb, we know the roads, we got it. Um, we are about to leave camp in the morning. We were about to leave camp, and um, we just turned out the road. So when you're on a glacier, you're on the roof, you just keep everyone safe and spread apart in case someone falls into a cross. And uh, we had our ropes spread out, we were all tied into the roof, and um, we're far enough apart that I decided to use walkie talkies. And um, Kenneth was at the back of our ropes, he was at the front, and I just I shared this little, this little swag over the radio. How do I put my crampons on? <laughs> we got all the way up there, and he, did, he didn't have to put his crampons on. Oh, man, I was. I, it was really funny, but it was really annoying. <laughs> so, I was like, come on, dude. Oh, we tried so hard to learn everything for that. And then on Mount Shasta, he, uh, he wrote me into another idea of his. Um, he said, you know what? The tent was so heavy on the like, Let's not bring a tent. <laughs> He's like, um, how many of you are just familiar with uh, Bibi? Bibi sex, Bibi sex? It's just like a, like a sleeping bag, but without any insulation, just like a bit of weatherproofing. Um, he's like, yeah, we'll just sleep on Shasta in a bivy bag. And I was like, no, I don't know, dude. I don't, I've never spent a night in a bivy bag before. He's like, no, 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 it's awesome. It rolls down small in town. It's like, it's great. You all can go right here in his voice, too. That's just the way he says. So. And uh, he wrote me into it. It's $168 on the bivy. And uh, we get up there. And um, the first night comes. And we don't have a plan for the first night. We're spending the night in the parking lot. He's like, oh, we're sick of bivy. I don't really want to sleep in the middle of a parking lot um, like out in the open, so he's like, I got it. So we actually put the tailgate down in the truck, and we slept in the bed of the truck in our bivvies, and we, uh, we, we tied them out to the crossbar, so that was pretty funny. But it got a lot less funny when we got up to the high camp and uh, the weather rolled in. This was the weather that um, was forecasted, but we ignored because uh, <laughs> it was fun. And uh, we got 10 inches of snow on the night. Um, we're out there, and if any of you spent the night in sack before, 10 inches of snow in a boot sack, they work together. Um, and for a while, um, one of our buddies was not here this evening, but um, he, he brought a tent because he said, I'm not messing around with a boot sack. And uh, we should listen to him. And uh, he was over in the tent, and Kenneth and I dug out a little spot for our boobies. And um, we're just sitting there, and we can, we're both getting cold. We're both just like, are you cold? Yeah, I'm cold. <laughs> as it turns out, if you zip the booty up as well, keep all the snow out, they don't breathe. So you can't breathe inside the booty, so you gotta open it up. And then all the snow gets in. So you're like fighting this battle. And um, I was like, are we gonna go to the tent? He's like, no, we're not going to the tent. He's like, this is gonna work, this is gonna work. And um, he's like, I'm gonna get out and fix my booty. Five minutes go by, don't hear anything from him. Come here, get back to his booty. I like, can it? Can it? I look at, oh yeah, no, he fails in the tent. For people that don't know him, I, I, just, I tell him he is the spirit of adventure. Like, he, he would never say no. Like, I know it's our problem. I came up with like crazy ideas and go, yeah, I'm like, ooh, okay. I, I, was, I was looking for some, like, maybe let's take a step back, but you know, we do a lot of fun things that way. Um, such a kind guy, too. I'm sure, you won't know. Um, we're on, when we were on Shasta, I was, I was really, really struggling. I had something in my lungs. I carry a lot of heavy gear, my bad. And um, he was doing fine because he runs, and I'm stubborn that I don't run. And uh, he's kicking my ass. And um, he stayed back for me. Um, our, our guy in the front, he was probably a good 30 minutes ahead of me on Shasta. And he kind of stayed back to make sure I was doing okay. Kept, kept back with me, even though he probably could have been even farther in front. He always started to show me how little my training meant. <laughs> he always, always an advocate for running. It's such a, such a kind, such a thoughtful guy. And, and just, he, he was just really, that's why I tell people when he, he really showed me what it means to live every single moment really make the most of it. And I think in my lifetime, I'll never live the amount of lifetime since I've already lived. I, I could never. It's just that special person. I'm, I'm really happy to see that so many other people feel that way. Um, it definitely, definitely changed my life.
know me? My name is Katie. I've been pretty good friends with Kenneth since freshman year. The past week's been really hard. I feel like a lot of stories have been shared, but one thing that I really wanted to come across was just the amount of gratitude that I feel for Kenneth. Some of these things have already said, but I'll say them again. Like Jake said, I don't know what was more impressive, Kenneth's faith in humanity or his faith in the ratchet straps. <laughs> There is no words to describe how much Kenneth has impacted my life and inspired my view of the world. I have so many memories with Kenneth that I hold really close to my heart. Some of those have been played up there, some of them haven't. I don't know if we were allowed to show me kidnapping Cameron for him on camera, but that was there too. From adventures to late night conversations to pranks and way overly competitive game nights. More than the experience, I remember his spirit and his friendship. He once told me spending time making memories with friends is more important than anything else, which is a truth that I think he carried out daily. No matter what stress he was under, no matter what he had the next day, he always put his friends first. And I believe it's physically impossible to speak to Kenneth and not leave with a smile. Every now and again, the universe places a person in our lives that leaves us changed. Kenneth gave us love and laughter with endless humility, and Kenneth approached every moment on this earth with an enthusiasm and a valor that takes so many people years and years to learn, and I only wish that I had more time to appreciate that. The like he brought touched everyone he interacted with, and I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to share some of my life with him. I felt so much sorrow over the past few days. I had to write this down so I didn't cry the whole time. <laughs> And I realize that's because the pain runs as deep as the love that he shared with us. It's really difficult to picture a future without Kenneth in it or an adventure that he's not leading, but I hope we can all continue with the spirit that he left. The community of support that's risen up has just been a testament to how much he's loved, and it's been amazing to share so many good memories with you guys. Thanks to everyone who's been pillars of support this entire week. It's been really hard to hold it up. And especially thank you to Ken's family, who he loves so much. Thank you for giving us such an amazing person to share life with. I know I'll be changed by the adventures, fun, and friendship he gave us. And I just want to carry that through the rest of my time here. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Ethan. Uh, I met Kenneth in one of my first days in Camp Poly, Stephen in my wild group. Um, and I don't really know what I want to say about him right now, but I know that I want to say something. And I feel like just uh, from after all this reflection, like, that's something that I think he would have taught me is to say the things that you want to say and to not leave things unsaid. And so I want to say and just you know put my appreciation for him out there. Um, I wish just like everyone here that I could have had more experiences and more time and more things to share about Kenny. Um, and it's hard to find the words. Um, like I said, it's, it's hard to find the words to say as much as I want to about him. But he was the most bright, smiley, and loving person. And like I just think about my own experience with experiences with him, and I know everyone has the exact same feelings towards him of just warmth and care and love. And you know, thinking about him and the way he lived his life has made me want to just change the way I live for the better and to just talk with everyone that I know and appreciate them and check in on them and love them and never leave anything unsaid and really take, really not take things for granted in my life and really take risks and really put myself out there and really do the things that I want to do and I know everyone feels very similar in that. Um, I didn't see him a lot um, last year. Um, because we just kind of were on different schedules, and, but every time I saw him, it was just you know, the same thing. It was five minutes of just happiness and a great, great time, and you know, a good feeling that someone is there to care for you and to ask about you. And 
this year I got to see him a lot more because I started working at climbing gym that he also climbs at a lot. And one of my last interactions with him was just me being kind of you know, taken away by my work or whatever, him just leaning over the counter and like shaking my hand like it was the first time I met him and just kind of, you know, giving me a smile and, you know, we just chat for a few minutes and that was that. But you know, I could always count on him to come in while I was working. I felt like he was there every time. I felt like every time I saw him, he was happy to see me and I could tell anyone who was with him was just happy to be with him. Um, and I know that I just want to live my life, you know, in a way that he lived his and appreciated everything. Um, so I wish I had better words for it and everything about him, but he was just quite possibly the best friend that anyone on this planet could have ever had. And I truly believe that. And you know, the world lost a very great man, a very great person. And yeah. <laughs> Kenneth was one of the first people I met freshman year on move-in day. And um, one of the kindest people I think I'll ever meet in my entire life. One of the things he taught me was just to say yes to everything. Kenneth was a doer, and I don't think many people lived like he did. I remember one time from one of our classic freshman year treks to Subway at 1 a.m. We were coming back into the Chukakunich dorms, and they were doing construction on something. I don't remember what exactly, but there was a pretty big crane in one of the yards. And as we walked by, he looked at me and he said, I'm gonna climb that. <laughs> and he did, and I stood watch to make sure that no cops were coming or anyone that would get him in trouble. I'm not sure what I would have done if there were any. <laughs> he was already on top of the crane. But um, I remember in that moment, I saw him on top of that crane, and I thought to myself, this is someone who really lives their life to the fullest. And who thinks something and follows through and, and does it. And that taught me a lot, I think. And he did this through everything. He would ask me to go on these crazy random adventures that I wouldn't think twice about. To me, it would be like a crossing thought of, oh, it would be cool if I did that. But to him, these were real ideas that, that could be lived and done. And, I think because of him, I carry more of that adventurous spirit with me. I think all of us do. And he taught us really not to just go through our lives, but to live our lives and to the fullest, and that those ideas are worth seeing through. And that's really special to me. school in Tucson, Arizona, at the University of Arizona. Um, and I mean, I don't have a ton more to add. Everyone has said a lot of things that really sum up Kenneth really well, I'd say. Um, I've, you know, even since we were 14, um, running cross country together, uh, sitting in math class together, sitting in German together. Um, uh, and. I, this has been the worst week of my of my life, uh, for surely, and I know it's probably been the worst week for a lot of other people too. Um, I had the the honor, and I would also say the misfortune, possibly, of being the last person to be with Kenneth um, last Saturday, um, a freshman year uh, of of college. I was like, yeah, I want to take a trip and go on an adventure, and Kenneth was um, 
my good friend, we were both going through some, you know, like your freshman year, first semester of college stuff, and we, we'd call each other like every other day, check in, um, we had a lot to empathize about. And so I, I decided to, to catch a 16 hour uh, bus and train ride to slow um because he's like yeah come over I'll, I'll show you around he he spoke so highly of slow he really really loved it so so much he just would not shut up about it um, and i loved it i loved hearing about it and like all the stories you're telling like the surf rider video i remember him snapping me that nice like marina i have a video that's due in like 30 minutes it's not done um and so I took that 16 hour bus ride to come visit him and it kind of became a thing. He'd come visit me in Tucson. Um, so yeah, last Saturday I, I came to visit and uh, yeah, so this has been a really rough week. I, I met with a grief counselor and she said, you know, you should try like writing some stuff down. Um, uh, and, and I made sure to do that. And then when I, uh, you know, 36 pages later, I was like, oh shoot. Um, and then, uh, you know, I called the, the Kimberly Walt, um, uh, just, just to talk to him, and they told me the memorial was going to be on Friday, and I was like, okay, I'll definitely be there, and they said there was going to be an open mic, and I couldn't decide if I wanted to say anything or not, um, because I am a bit of a rambler, if you can't already tell, <laughs> and so I tried summing some, some things up, and I figured I'd, you know, I, I don't know that I can say I knew uh, Kenneth the best, but I'd like to think I, I knew him really well. Um, and so I tried to list a few of my favorite things about him. Uh, tried to keep it somewhat funny, but a lot of people have already made us laugh and said a lot of similar things. Um, and I, I, yeah, I'm already rambling, I'm so sorry. But just, Ultimately, what I, yeah, like everyone says, like, you just, you couldn't ask for a better friend. Um, and I'm glad to have known him for these last, like, seven years and seen how he's changed and, you know, become a better and better friend. He just always got better. And a few of my favorite things were, like, his music tastes, which heavily influenced my, I, gave him crap about it because I said, Kenneth, your music taste can be summed up into three genres, um, men with accents and emotions, granola cowboys, and rappers. Um, he was in the top 0.1% of Mac Miller listeners. I will never forget about that. That was just insane to me. And I'd get snaps every other month saying, Marina, I'm mourning the death of Mac Miller right now. Um, I was like, okay, I'm so sorry, Kenneth. Um, oh, yeah, see, yeah, I'm definitely rambling. But I also wanted to uh, share a story about when he first got me into rock climbing. It was summer of 2022 in the Tri-Cities. He was working four 10-hour shifts a day just because that was their schedule. Um, and he had just started getting into rock climbing courtesy of like Katrina taking him to rock climbing gyms and everything. And he was like, Marina, I need a belayer. Are you down? And I was like, yeah, all right. Um, and so we drive 45 minutes out to uh, Lulula Gap and uh, towards Walla Walla. A 45 minute drive, he would make into a 30 minute drive, of course. Um, and we do climbing and it was always just like the highlight of my week. He'd pick me up after work. And one time we were driving back and I realized I lost an earring somewhere out on the rocks. Um, and I don't own expensive earrings because they fall out a lot, evidently. And I was like, oh shoot, I lost my earring. He was like, oh, we can go back. And I'm like, no, it's like five cents. Don't worry about it. Guess what he gave me the next time he picked me up? My freaking earring. I could not believe it. I was like, Kenneth, as an environmentalist, you should realize what a waste of gas that was. <laughs> but I, you know, that was just a testament to the, to the sweet guy he was, right? And like, I, yeah. Um, <laughs> so that was one example. And I mean, ultimately what I wanted to sum up was like, like I loved picking his brain. We talk every day, like our snap streak was 
pretty long. Not that we ever tried to keep streaks because that was like stupid, but <laughs> you know, the only time it got broken up was because he was yeah, skiing down some, you know, pinner peak or whatever and you know, uh, trying to cook too thick of pork chop in the back of his truck and didn't have service. And then he'd recap me on it when he got back. Uh, but anyways, um, I love to pick his brain about everything. Yeah, because his, uh, his, as a lot of people have said, you know, he's a very out of the box thinker. I would describe, and he would describe his approach to life as lawfully chaotic, a strong moral code that was indiscernible by anyone else. Um, and that was just amazing. So, you, you know, I love asking him anything. What are your thoughts on the great Gatsby? Do you think happiness can be quantified? Um, yeah, and yeah, what defines truth? He asked me what I thought about the Nepalese Sherpa industry. Uh, and I asked him what kind of camp stoves he had, and you know, if I should get a, a roof tent for solo camping if, I, if and when I ever got a car. He was adamantly against that. He was very adamant about being in nature. He was the one who convinced me to sleep in a hammock when we went camping, which kind of scared the crap out of me, but um, you know, he was. He was like, you, well, you can sleep above me, so if there's any attackers that come, like, I'll be on the bottom, right? Because, of course, that would be his attitude about that. Um, <laughs> it's just amazing. Um, and then one other thing I asked him one time was, like, do you think there's one trait that if every human on Earth was, like, maybe not perfect at it, was a little better at it, um, like, the world would just be, like, a, a way better place because of that one trait. Like, if everyone was more organized, better communication, etc. cetera. And, and he disagreed. You know, any answer he ever gave to any of my questions, like, was very thought out. Um, and, you know, he, he'd point out all the perspectives, perhaps, and we'd love to go back and forth. I wish I could go back and take the average of how long our phone conversations were. He was the only other person I knew with as much disregard for a sleep schedule as me. I remember... Our last phone call before this weekend was till like 2 a.m. on a Sunday night, and I had an 8 a.m., but it was a really good conversation, so, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, his answers were always very thought out, and he, he disagreed. He didn't think that there was a, an, a single trait that uh, everyone could have that the world would, you know, be better off that being the case. He thought that would take away too much individuality, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I still disagreed with him then, I disagree with him now. I think if everyone had even half the generosity that Kenneth had, the world would be an infinitely, not perfect, but a much better place, because that was something that stuck out to me the most about Kenneth. He was um, completely, uh, constantly and unapologetically selfless with with his time, with his energy, with his gear. Um, and that is something that I'll try and take away. I, I'm still trying to come to the conclusions of what I'm supposed to you know, take from all this. Um, but his generosity is one that I think about the most right now. Um, yeah. Um, Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'd also like to point out that everyone you see here is only a fraction of the impact that he had around him, because I mean, there's everyone from high school, and there's people all over the country that are mourning him right now. Um, so I'd like to point that out as well. And to whom it may concern, hopefully this makes you laugh, makes you feel inspired, I don't know. His, his final words were, um, uh, it'll be okay. <laughs> and, um, fuck it, we ball. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and last thing I wanted to say that um, I thought would be a good punchline for, you know, like, hug your friends and go outside. Because, like you said, you really like hugs. And you like going outside. <laughs>
I think there's a reason that there are many repeating themes throughout everything we say about Kenneth, and that's because Kenneth never pretended to be anyone that he wasn't. He, I met him on my first class at Cal Poly ever, and I was still shy from high school. I mean, the type of kid who just wanted to go home and play video games and isolate himself. He noticed that, and on the first day, he came up to me, started talking to me, and we had long conversations that derailed from lecture very often. Um, every lab that we had in that class, we would try to do something crazy. We tr he tried to do a handstand on a bicycle wheel one time. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just kind of things. Um, after that, I still would see him every once in a while, and like all of you have said and noticed, it's impossible to be around Kenneth and leave off, leave that conversation or interaction worse off than you were before. Um, every time I would see him, I would get a smile on my face because I knew my day was about to get a little bit brighter. And that's why I was so excited to hear that, I mean, figure out that I was going to be rooming with him um, this year. Um, simply put, Kenneth was the best part of every morning, and I would only get out of bed once I heard or smelled his sunny side up eggs <laughs> that were, for the first few weeks, always burnt. <laughs> but he figured it out. He learned by doing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He would every morning be in the kitchen and I would also join him in the kitchen to make some coffee or also make eggs and I would make them scrambled, which led to a lot of arguments. <laughs> and if there's one thing I noticed about Kenneth since the first time I saw him is that, you know, we go around college and we see all our friends and people we've known in classes and sometimes we even hesitate to say hi. Um, I don't think I've ever seen Kenneth have small talk, you know? Yes, he talked a lot, but in the best way possible. I would see him in the morning. We'd talk about classes. We'd talk about existential questions. Um, getting home at night in our very cramped highway, hallway, me and all my roommates would have some crazy conversations or debates about how many original sentences could be made. And Kenneth would very often tend to start to agree with you, but he would still hold on to this point enough to argue about it for another 30 minutes, just for the sake of the argument. <laughs> um, he was ma a magical person, as you guys have said. Um, I would very often be FaceTiming my girlfriend in my room and tell her, you won't believe what kind of just texted the group chat. <laughs> or we would both hear somehow through the microphone as well, some loud thump or bonk and it would be him trying to get into this bed that was almost taller than him, to which he would not agree to have a stool or ladder of any kind. Just loved having that process of a muscle up right before sleep. <laughs> uh, so, you know, the good old going to bed, at, you know, we were both usually the two people who were awake the latest, and I would just love the fact that I could go out and see him like getting water and just talk, and he would very often just say good morning at night, which was also really fun. Um, and yeah, many times trying to fall asleep, I would just hear, ow. <laughs> and something would either fall or sound crazy, and I would usually go out and check, and most likely it was Kenneth's room, so I would knock and say, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm great. <laughs> and, it <was> just, <laughs> and it just became a normal thing, man. <laughs> um, you know, there's one thing, though, that's through all of this, you know, I've been grateful with every, for every interaction I've had, the pleasure and honor to share it with them. Um, you know, we're all in college and we're all trying to figure ourselves out since day one, first quarter, and until now, until we graduate. Um, yet, in that regard, I think that it's such a beautiful and wonderful honor to have him be a part of our growth. Um, we're all developing into people, especially at this stage, and knowing him at this part of my life is the best time I wish I could have ever known him because. I started doing photography more because of him. I went on so many adventures because of him. He kind of just did all the things that you'd say, oh, I'd like to do that at some point, and never did. He would actually execute every time. He was like a walking motivation, a walking inspiration, and he always filled me with admiration. Um, 
he, as you guys have said, impacted everyone around him. I think we, anybody who's gotten the chance to actually like get to know him knows that he's a part of their personality and who they are now. And in that way, he kind of just always lives with us. And I really like thinking about that. Um, sorry. Um, he, he affected even people who he barely met. Um, my girlfriend is in nursing school in South Carolina, and today her and all three of her roommates are wearing flannel. Um, and he's, I think we can all agree that he might be the most unique person we've ever met and in the best possible way. Um, so to Kenneth, I love you so very much and I will miss you and carry you with me the rest of my life. Everybody, this is my first time on a microphone in a long time. Um, my name is also Kenneth, and um, I'm kind of doing a brain fog up here. But before I tell our story, um, I just this whole night has given me something to look forward to, in that this is the first time in my life where I've seen how being a positive person to the degree that he was, and so true to himself the degree that he was, that if we can be, if we can tap into that, this is how many people it could leave a positive impact on. And that is, I think that is a deeply beautiful thing. Uh, and I'll be looking forward to that for a long time. Uh, so we met in January of 2022, when I became tuned to the outdoor community here and I heard about this mythical other Kenneth. <laughs> I would hear his name so much around campus and in different communities. And I was always told, because I'm an outdoor photographer too. Like, you, I should meet him, you're so similar. But everyone would say, no, you don't understand. You are so similar. <laughs> and so I met him for the first time with the Poly Escapes crew. We did a Poly Escapes Wilderness Outdoor Training together. And we had two long eight hour days of being taught by Sarah. Uh, all wilderness first day material. And we had one hour break the whole day, both days. And the second we met each other, we were like, let's just go play racquetball together. Let's run to the racquetball courts and play for that whole hour together. And we came up with a nickname for ourselves. Um, we called ourselves Kenneth Squared. And for ever since I've known him, every time we saw each other, we would always say, like, it, would, it is an honor and a privilege to be confused for one another. And we would always joke about it. And um, yeah, and he loved Make Waves. His, we kind of felt like two halves of the same outdoorsy Kenneth's point. Because all the clubs that I was in, like Van Life and Hiking Club, he was in Surf Rider and a lot of other communities. I just found out he attended some garden club events too. Like he was in every nook and cranny of this campus. Awesome to see. And we made like deal, we made packs with ourselves to go to each other's club events. And I introduced him to some friends of mine and I remember a hiking club event where we climbed Madonna together. I was dressed in a full sand suit. That was hot and sweaty. Um, and Kenneth was there and Hadass was there and we just thought, like, let's take some pictures. Because so many people would come up to me in a Santa outfit and be like, hey, could I sit on your lap and take a photo with you? <laughs> and my favorite photo of Kenneth and I was of him sitting on my lap making the stupidest face, and I love it. Um, but he became, yeah, he was just photographing random strangers coming up and sitting on my lap, and we'd be joking about it. And he was called Landscape Kenneth. I called him Portrait Kenneth. We were. I two halves of the outdoorsy coin, and um, I got to see and hear stories about all the people that went on snow trips with him, rock climbing with him. And I, he was in so many communities, and I think I can picture him with like the biggest grin on his face right now, seeing how many people have a part of him with him. And I think that is a, again, a deeply beautiful thing. If this day honestly is giving me something to look forward to. Of, if we can channel his spirit and be extremely positive and true to ourselves, then maybe we could be lucky enough to impact this many people in our lives. Hi, um, 
my name is Hadas. Um, I remember that day when we went um, up to Madonna um, in December, and um, it was like Kenneth and I were like this well-oiled machine, like, okay, next person to take a photo with Santa, okay, next person to take a photo with Santa. And he was just so excited to see the smiles on everybody's faces to be able to take a photo. Um, so Kenneth and I really liked climbing together, and um, one time we were climbing um, near Los Osos, and um, I found this little um, star carabiner in his bag, and I was like, oh, this is the cutest thing ever. Um, I don't remember that um, around the time that I met him, um, I told him I was really gullible, and he was like, perfect. <laughs> um, and he managed to convince me that this was like a very essential like piece of safety equipment. He was like, this star carabiner is like, like it's so important. Um, and I was like, I was like, no, though. But he like, you know, he just kept talking until he convinced me. And then, um, and I was like, oh, okay, for sure. He's like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> um, but I still thought it was the cutest thing ever. And he was like, well, why don't you just wear it while you climb up for good luck? Um, and so I did, and I was like, okay. Um, and then we would trade off. Like, he would wear it when he climbed up, and I would wear it when I climbed up. Um, I think he told me he got it from like Amazon or something. And um, um, when I found out that he passed, um, one of the first things I did was go on Amazon and I had this little pink hair <laughs> Um Because I truly feel like he, um, like he was that piece of good luck. Um, I've definitely done my most challenging routes with him just because he was like, full send. <laughs> if you know climbing, you know, you say like, on belay, belay on, climbing, climb on. Um, he was like, ah, let's, let's go. Say, like, full send, full send. If you ever climb with him, that's what he wanted to do. Um, or fuck it, we fall. <laughs> um, and um, I think one of, um, the things that I've been uh, doing recently is reading um, over um, our past conversations. And I remember he came back from a trip um, down south, and he told me that he'd seen one of the top 10 most beautiful sunsets he'd ever seen. And he left his camera at camp, and he was a little upset about it. But um, with Eve, you know, he, he really made me um, think about that. And I, I read that I had replied, oh, damn, like, I could really use a nature moment he was like, okay, let's go on the sunset hike. Like, let's just go on the sunset hike. Um, and I just really felt like he always, always tapped into that. He always saw people's desire to connect with nature and wanted to be their vessel to experience that. I feel like a lot of people have shared examples today that, um, that exhibited that. Um, and there's a photo of, <laughs> Stan, I'm sorry. Um, i um, so deeply grateful. Um, I'm very, very grateful for his family. He talked about you guys a lot. Um, and um, thank you for bringing such a beautiful light to the world. Something a friend told me recently um, while I was having a hard time um, was that she, she had never met him. And she said, you know, energy cannot be created or destroyed, and when you speak of him, when you share his stories, you are passing on his energy, and I feel it. So I really, really encourage everyone to keep sharing his stories, because even to the people who don't know him, his energy is moving between us, and that will always be here, because, you know, he, he's too stubborn to not be here. <laughs> Nash, and I had the privilege of uh, being a Polyscape trip leader with Kenneth. Um, the first time I met him was for his hands-on interview uh, about a year ago. And one of the stages of the hands-on interview was to kind of display how you would handle participants in a little bit of downtime. So 
we usually do some sort of name game or something like that. And a lot of the other people we were interviewing did some name games or some riddles, um, normal stuff. When it was Kenneth's turn, he, um, he took one look around our gear storage area where we were hosting this, and he saw a rope and some snowshoes, and he subjected his future boss and future coworker to a three-legged race wearing snowshoes on a parking lot. And I think that really sums up his creativity and his willingness to achieve goals that don't necessarily seem stereotypical. Um, as somebody who had been a part of Polyscapes for longer than Kenneth, I was supposed to be a mentor figure to Kenneth, but I found myself learning so much more from him than I could possibly have taught him. He taught me how to coil a rope, he taught me how to fix a gas leak in a stove, and he taught and demonstrated to me and 12 trip participants the optimal way to get into a kayak. <laughs> but the most amazing things I learned from him were far more abstract than backcountry hard skills. Kenneth taught me how to live. I know there's no right way to live, but the way Kenneth did it was as close to perfect as I can imagine. And I'm so incredibly lucky to have gotten the chance to see Kenneth live. He lived with a pure honesty to others, and more importantly, to himself. He lived with passion, with a love for each step, breath, and sight he took on this earth. He, stayed, he lived with drive and made goals that didn't stay goals for long because completion was always close behind. He lived with a kindness that I have never seen before, an unconditional form of kindness which was available to everyone he came across. With these principles, Kenneth lived more of his time here than most people do with all the time in the world. The things that Kenneth taught me while I watched him live are the lights that have guided me through the darkness of this week. Each lesson is a reminder that Kenneth has far from left us, and he will always be here to show us the way. My vow to him is to live as he did, with honesty, passion, drive, and kindness. met him I couldn't really figure him out like he kind of threw me for a curveball because I've never really met anyone like him so I knew that I really wanted to be his friend. Um, a couple of fun moments we had together. Um, he came over from over to the west side of Washington um, a couple summers ago to come climbing with me and it was really great. It was really nice to have someone from Cal Poly there. Um, and he was just such, so great to be around. Um, we went climbing and we did this route and climbed it first. He crushed it, obviously. Um, I went after and I was like three quarters of the way up and I was really scared and I was really struggling. Um, I was like, Kenneth, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I'm scared. And he was like, no, you got it. Like, stop, you're, you're good. <laughs> you got it, Caleb. Um, and he he let me just sit there on the rope and, and be scared and encouraged me to keep going. Um, and that was really nice. Um, but I ended up not being able to do it um, and I had to come down, and I was embarrassed because <laughs> I didn't wasn't able to do it. But he had such kindness and was so supportive. He didn't allow me to feel embarrassed. He was like, "Everyone, that happens to everyone, Kayla. Like, there's no reason for you to to feel embarrassed about it. Like, it was a hard route." Um, and so he went and he climbed it again because we need to get our expensive gear back. Um, and he didn't make me feel bad for having to climb it again. And I was very glad um, that we had gotten to do that route. Um, and this year I went back and I, I tried that one again and I did it. Um, and I think that Kevin really helped me through that. And he was 
be very proud to know that I did that. Um, another thing, uh, when we were on Rainier, um, after the first night we were camping and we were trying to get to bed early, um, and then I remember I was like kind of sick and tired, um, and we were all trying to sleep when he left the tent in the middle of the night. I was like, where can we go? Um, and he comes back in, he's like, my contact fell out. Um, but he was like kind of cranky about it. He was like, but I got some great pictures of the sunset. You'll never believe it. Um, and later I, I saw those pictures. And um, yeah, I think it was just a testament how he uh, was always able to put a positive spit on things. And even when like his contact was bucky and he couldn't really sleep. He still wanted to stop and take a picture of the sunset because um, it was one. It was a beautiful, beautiful one. Um, and then this quarter, this last quarter, we have um, a class together, um, a lab, and he would always be saying something funny in the group chat about the lab that we were doing, um, and we would always go and go to the climbing gym as an excuse to climb and also do work at the same time. And we would always argue about in what order the work should happen. Um, I always thought that the work should happen after we, before, like we should climb after we did our homework as a reward for having done the homework. Um, he thought we should climb first so we'd be tired and we wouldn't be thinking about climbing while we did the work. <laughs> um, so our compromise was do both and climb before and then work and then climb after. <laughs> um, I am really grateful to have met Kenneth and to have called him a friend. Um, and I really wish we had got to have more adventures. Um, but. I know that I will um, see him in every white truck that goes by, um, and every time I go climbing, I know I'll think of him, and he was just really special. stories of RAs or you had an RA when you were in college yourself, you know that the first year RA um, is always step at the job of being that transitional person from the parents' house to the kids on their own. And um, Kenneth and everyone else on my floor, I just knew that they were going to be a great group of kids. Um, they were my first round of students after COVID, and they were the first round of residents that I would actually get to experience a full year with. Um, that year, Kenneth was so attentive to everyone on the floor, um, everyone he interacted with, and he made my job really, really easy. We had to do reports on all of our residents and I never once had to go in and check on Kenneth because he would always come and check in on me. He, well, I felt like he was more my RA than I was his. Um, he would call me out when I would throw things in the wrong recycling bin or the compost. Um, but ultimately, um, that year was the year that I um, broke up with a long distance boyfriend and the next night um, my parents told me that they were going to get into a divorce and my I thought my whole world was shattering around me and Kenneth was the only person who recognized when my open door policy stopped and he was the only one who came and checked in on me and he was like, hey, at the beginning of the year, you said your door would always be open when you were home, and you've been home and your door's not open. I'm going to check in on you, 
every single day and make sure that you're okay. And so every day that I would get home and I would be crying on the couch, I would hear this knock and then be like, Bridget, open your door. And I'm like, oh, Kenneth, I don't want him. He's like, open the door. Is your room clean? And I'm like, no. And he's like, clean your room. I'm like, okay. And that was his character. He always knew when people needed to be checked in on. Um, he always could see what other people were going through um, without even them telling him. I didn't even have to tell him. And he was like, this is the song that got me through my breakup. I need you to listen to it on repeat. And it was called Chicken Tindies. And I was like, can I this song make you listen? And he's like, trust me, it works. And after listening to that song probably a million times and listening to that song probably like 40 times this week, um, mm. he really recognized before anybody else how far dark in a dark place I was um, and he was the one who would pull, who pull me out of it um, and your son is the one who saved my life mm. I was that far gone that if he hadn't have checked in on me I was so close and because I knew that he would check in on me every day he kept me going and I will forever be grateful for that and I always made sure to text him. And even though I stopped seeing him every day, he will forever hold a close place in my heart. And he will forever be the person that always knew to check in on me because he recognized that even though RAs had mandatory relationships, that they were still humans and they still experienced things too and needed a friend to check in on them. electronic pen died and within a millisecond Kenneth got up and just took his pen and gave it to our professor and said please write with my pen and our professor was like no let me check if I have another battery and Kenneth was like no you have to write with this pen <laughs> and um, once the class was over my professor returned, wanted to return it to him. And Ken said, no, you have a class after this. You have to keep the pen. You're going to write with that pen. Um, and I just remember looking at his white, beautiful smile. And as you said, energy cannot be created or destroyed. And his energy is still in the room. and. <laughs> I just miss him in the class so much. And thank you, Kenneth. And thank you guys for bringing him into the world. So we have a real quick operational update. So there is an event with amplified sound going on in the plaza starting momentarily. We were able to push them uh, from starting their sound from 6.30 till now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pile everybody we can in here. We're gonna pretend that's not breaking any codes. Uh, <laughs> and then we're gonna close the doors and we're gonna keep going. And just in case um, anyone needs to step out, I'm gonna offer my, my closing in a moment and then we're just gonna keep going. So from there, if anyone can pile in, we're, we're just gonna see how many people we can fit in here. Huh? They're in here. They can't. 
can because there's, there's another event going on right next to yeah. outside. Is this one working? Perfect. Good. So just one more time again, I'm going to share what are going to be my closing remarks. And we're, just, we're not going to close. We're just going to keep going. I think that in the way we've heard and what I knew I would hear everyone speak about, about Kenneth, it's clear that everyone he encountered in his life was struck by the way he invited people in and understood people and welcomed you to feel joy with him. Kenneth put in actual work and effort to make finding adventure easy and to make living life to the fullest the standard. He affected people not just widely and readily, but deeply and actively. As humans, we interact with each other as a part of our daily lives, and I know that many of us often think about our daily impact. Tonight, I think that we have taken time to remember what a beautiful thing it is to be impacted by someone else. And if I can read my handwriting, <laughs> and to live with them and experience life with them. However you leave tonight, wherever you go, and whatever you do, take how you have known Kenneth and be affected. Care for yourself, self, and others if you can. Live life fully and understand it as wild and silly and absurd and complex. More than anything, be truly with yourself and with others. And I wrote here that I was going to say rest in peace, but I don't think that fits. <laughs> so instead, I, I made a list. I'm just going to share all of them. I said, rest wildly, rest in mischief, rest with freedom, and then rest on top of something tall. <laughs> Terrence Carter. I was there when this incident happened. Um, Marina, uh, she's your hero. Um, I'm Austin. He was also there. Um, 
I was going on a drive. I'm not going to get f too fully into the story, but I was going on a drive this last Saturday because I was searching for healing and peace. Um, in March, my dad committed suicide, and I didn't know how to deal with that pain. And I just know that outdoors and being connected with nature and watching the waves and going on a drive, it was healing for me. And when Marina flagged me down and asked me for help, I knew I had to help and say that I couldn't keep on driving. And I got out and I helped Marina and so did Austin. And um, his last moments of his life, were, it was very, it was tragic. Um, it was very hard to like, you know, relive that. But seeing all of you guys and hearing all this today is amazing. You guys are truly, I, like, I only wish I have a group of friends and support system like Kenneth had, or he has right now. And to his family, my deepest condolences um, for your son. And I really wanted to say a prayer with Marina, but I didn't get a chance to because I, it was just in the moment. And I was like, man, I really wanted to say a prayer with her because I believe in God and I believe in connections. And I don't think anything's by coincidence. I think things happen for a reason. And so I would like to say a prayer now because I feel like this is my second chance. And I feel like any time you get a second chance, you should always take advantage of it and make it happen, just like Kenneth probably would. <laughs> so um, you guys, if you bow, uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you. Um, thank you so much for this memorial. This probably means so much to um, Kenneth's family and his friends and everybody got to you know share stories. And I'm sure there will be more stories to share. Um, with his family and as the years come. God, we know that we're not placed on this earth for just a random reason. We're here for a purpose and we're here to spread love and we're here to care for everybody and we're here to just be good people. So God, I know that we all make mistakes. I know that we all go our different ways and you bring us back. And I just wanna say thank you so much for this memorial right now and bringing Kenneth's friends, his family, uh, the faculty, everyone, you could see so much energy from Kenneth being in this room today. So we just want to say thank you. Thank you for Marina. Thank you for everyone that helped. And we love you. And we just want to um, just really bring up Kenneth's soul right now and just his energy and just live that out the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. here is Kenneth's friend um, and obviously our family has come as well um, talking about his kindness um, it you know you're hearing it all with his friends but it's it's I think somewhat unique that somebody has that trait with both family and friends um, my last experience with Kenneth was um, he came he came to Tahoe at the same time that I was in Tahoe um, and um, he was probably an hour away. Um, he was with his friend Xavier. And um, I don't know that a lot of people would have come out of their way to come visit us. And I had offered, you know, I had offered to visit him, um, but he had said, you know, we're going to finish up. They drove an hour out of their way to come down and visit with us. Um, and that was just something that he would do without even thinking about it. Um, so another thing that occurred to me um, that I have um, benefited from in my life when I have lost a friend is that I now have a group of friends that I get together with once a year. Um, so I would encourage you guys to make sure you keep your connections um, with your friends. And then um, you have the link um, that was shared earlier on Facebook. Um, and so the one thing that I would encourage is maybe 
um, next year on April Fools that you all um, post something that you that you would like to do or that you that you have done. Um, that was one thing that with Kenneth. Um, I wasn't with him on April Fools, but it seems like every time I was with him, it was April Fools. <laughs> um, so, uh, thank you. freshman year um, enjoy I've met him in Joy's uh, intro lab and didn't really know him well then and I didn't realize how much of an impact he would have um, whatever class we did we end up sharing especially last year schedules lined up almost perfectly every class so just through the day um, but I got to host him for Thanksgiving with my parents and family um, in Atascadero, and forgot to mention, we don't do it super, super formal. Didn't tell him any of that. I realized when he said, oh, I'm on my way. Um, I, I didn't know what he was gonna dress up like. He's always in his flannel, his, his shoes, whatever. Um, but white button up, tie, vest, <laughs> slacks. He did put on nice shoes, which, <laughs> I didn't see any other pair. Like, I only see the bands. Um, but he pulled in, and I was I was picking pomegranates because we have a pomegranate tree, and it's so great. Um, and so I was like, oh, I gotta stop. And unless you want to help me pick pomegranates, he says, yeah, sure. Didn't take anything off. Gets into the tree. Helps me. Um, and then later that night, because it was. Well, Thursday, so we have the weekend until the next quarter. Um, or no, thanks for break. Yeah, we we still have class, but he goes, I'm gonna go to Big Sur this weekend tomorrow morning at like six a.m. or something. You wanna come? So, I don't know what I had to do, but I wish I had said yes. He said I got a spare gear. I'll pack your bag. Let me know by I don't know midnight tonight. Um, I just wish I had gone with him, um, but. I don't remember who mentioned it, but always say yes. But that's one of them. Um, and then this year, I mean, what, last quarter didn't have any classes with him, but uh, this quarter I did. Didn't realize it. Walked into the door, he got a class ahead of me. He looks, oh, Jaden! Smile on his face. Gets out of his chair, comes and hugs me. And I just know I'm gonna remember that feeling. Which I feel it right now. Gonna miss it. But thank you. Just briefly, I am Jaden's mom. So thank you for sharing your son with our family. That was a lover. He lit up the room. My parents were there. My family. Everybody's everywhere, so everybody was able to be together, and it was a joy to welcome him, so thank you. Anyway, so he's walking around with his fish flops, and he gets a big pink sun hat, 
because we needed to get it for Hawaii and pink was the funniest option. And then he, there was some, uh, we went to high school, I, he was a, I was a senior and he was a freshman. Um, I'm his sister, that moment, I guess. Um, and uh, there was some like Christmas or, hel or holiday decoration. Anyway, he had, a, he had the idea of dressing up for this competition. And so we ordered this Christmas suit on Amazon, this like big, silly, you might have, there were photos of it. And it came like just in time. And then he tries it on and it's huge. It's way too big. So he's really bummed. And so we ended up wearing matching um, like Christmas onesies because that's a different family tradition. But now he has this suit, right? And it's like really cheap fabric, um, but gaudy thing with a tie. Um, it's way too big. And so, so we go skiing. I don't know, I think maybe it started with ski prom. White Pass had ski prom, so I wear an old homecoming dress, and he wears this ski suit, or Christmas suit. Um, and then that became a tradition. Every Christmas, I usually dressed up as something else, or I put a Santa hat on, and he had his full suit over his, his ski clothes. Um, I mean, nothing embarrassed. Well, Mom could embarrass that kid, but nothing else <laughs> embarrassed that kid. I mean, he just, gosh, if you're ever, like, looking, Two options, and you're like, which one's funnier? Or that one for him. say much but I know that our grad not say anything and so to the students here um I go to Purdue University which is an engineering school and so he was like looking to go there and at the college visit I asked him like what more do you need than your cousin at college <laughs> and his response was a lot <laughs> and so just like hearing all the stories of like all the adventures he went on with everyone here it's, it's just really cool because it was a lot more than just having a cousin at a boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> um, but another thing I was thinking about is this morning, um, my mom woke me up and like kind of said we should start living more like in it, like get up and just do it. <laughs> um, and then last night while we were like at his roommate's house, that all the stories and memories like were told as if he was still here. So I just thought that was really important. <laughs> Katrina and Anna were hanging out, and I felt left out because they were doing all these girl things. He was like, we don't need to do that. And he taught me how to shoot rubber bands with my finger. <laughs> and um, this was a weekend we were visiting them, and my grandma had to sleep in his room, and he was not happy about that. He was like, let's hang out in my room. And I didn't really know what we were doing. <laughs> and we put the mattress on the door <laughs> so grandma could not get into her room. So he's always been doing prank stuff. <laughs> um, she, she didn't like that. <laughs> but anytime someone tried to get in, you know, we'd shoot their rubber bands. <laughs> and um, that was what came to mind. But he was also just, he's one of those people who you always just, you know, he'd get it. It's a good thing about 
family, especially to our family, so close. I don't know if Chris is gonna say that. Okay, well, our family is so close. We do anything for each other. It's just like, I knew you could not talk to him for forever, and he'd still just, you know, be so excited to hear you from me. My name is Chris. I'm uh, Kenneth's oldest cousin, and uh, his mom, Kimberly, talked about his favorite holiday being uh, April Fool's. Well, mine was Christmas because I meant I got to see cousin Kenneth. And uh, talk about his truck. I'm going to share a story about Kenneth Christmas and his truck. So, <laughs> last year uh, for Christmas was the first chance that we got to. Be all together for, again for in a while. It's really nice to see everybody. We, I'm uh, down in San Diego, and my wife and I were driving up to northern Idaho. Pretty long trip, and on uh, Christmas Eve, uh, we're making our way up and about 20 miles south of the Oregon border. Our car breaks down. Let's get a tow into uh, Klamath Falls, Oregon. And, Make a call up to Kenneth, and what's the first thing he does? He gets in his truck with his mom, and he drives down and picks us up. So he does this, and we're able to spend Christmas together. Just, just he had the biggest heart. He go out of his way to do anything for you, and we didn't even have a plan to go back. So he gets back in his truck when it's time to go, and he takes us back to that small town. And it's the last time I got to see him. You guys shared the story about him in Mount Rainier, and have some regrets. I was in Washington during that time and uh, on the other side of Mount Rainier actually only 20 miles away and really wanted to see him and thought I'll get to see him again. <sighs> wish I had gotten it. Wish I had taken that opportunity to go see my cousin one more time. But the generosity that Kenneth had we also had a little bit of that. I think somebody mentioned it, but it will be a better place. Thank you. I just wanted to briefly add to Chris's story. Um, so I think the most telling part of that whole trip was not only, so for context, our car broke down and it was like 6 a.m. Christmas day. So Kenneth and Kimberly chose to give up their entire Christmas day to come drive to see us, to rescue us, um, which was just incredibly telling of both of their characters that they were so willing to do that for us. Um, but specifically, at the end of the drive, we're driving up the mountain that their cabin is on, and there's a car in a ditch, and I mean, everyone's been driving for like 20 plus hours, we're all exhausted, it's like 5 a.m., we just want to get there. Yes. And um, the car that's in a ditch, Kenneth is like, we have to help them, and he immediately pulls over, gets out of the car, and pushes them out of the ditch even though the rest of us were like, no. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, we have to help them. So um, Kenneth is just, he had the best character and so generous to help others. And he showed everyone how much he loved them and how much they meant to him. Over and, sees me. and I, I see him, I'm like, get it! Immediately 
hits the brakes, the bottom of this big hill. Yes, it did. Yeah, that, that's kind of my last, my last really good memory of the hill. And then, yeah, that and he also is the only reason I passed that hill. <laughs> Socrates as well um, when he was a freshman. I think I was a third year. Um, and yeah, just remembering all just the little moments, just seeing him across campus and running to give you a big hug. Um, you know, there's so many incredible adventures, stories that I look up to him and his expertise so much. Um, but just the little smiles he would give you um, really stick, stuck with me. Um, I remember one time pulling up to the Buttermilks and Bishop, and I had no idea who was out there, but I, I stop the car and like run out because I see a big white truck, and he's, he's like, remember to be seen, and he pops out from the other side from a little tent that they pitched just the night before, um, because they, yeah, they're like, oh, this looks good in the gutter, um, and just pinched, their, pitched his tent there, uh, and just, yeah. We'll always remember his warm, so genuine hug um, and laugh. But yeah, will stick with me forever. Um, he brought so much enthusiasm and joy to Sir Prider and the extended community, as all of you have beautifully shared with us here. Um, and yeah, his warm-heartedness and care for family, especially um, away from home and back at home really showed just through how he looked at you. Um, he always looked you in the eye and, um, yeah, just brought a sense of genuinity to care for the space around you and just for yourself and the people around you. And, um, yeah, that has just inspired me to be the best person I can be and to just meet every moment to the fullest and um, to just take a moment to slow down even when you're moving so fast at kind of click and just really appreciate what's around you. And yeah, I'm really excited to see all these pop flowers pop up as we sell them in the club. And yeah, my love just goes out to all of you who, who he touched in some way, especially his family. So thank you so much um, for sharing. Hi, um, my name is Grace. Um, I feel like Kenneth would be mad if I didn't speak because he'd be like, Grace, why are you thinking about talking the whole night? And then he didn't say anything. That's kind of lame. Uh, but if anyone gave like Kenneth's shit for his shoes, it was me. Like every time I see him, I'm like, Kenneth, what about our GoFundMe? What about those shoes? Like, we gotta get you new shoes. And he'd be like, my parents said they wouldn't pay for them. Um, so it's not happening. And I was like, all right, all right, fine. Um, but Kenneth, I met him last year. Uh, I joined Surf Rider very timidly. Um, all my surf rider family, I love them. I was scared of them at first though. And <laughs> I uh, boothed with Kenneth and he picked apart my brain and got to know me in like the first 10 minutes. And I knew nothing about surf rider and I, he helped me pretend like I knew exactly what I was talking about. And from then on, I felt very welcomed in the community. And eventually, like as time went on, he got me to climb outside and just do all these things. I'm like a very anxious person. And he was like, Grace, you're OK, and everything's fine. And it always was. And I think he was a little like angel on my shoulder, always being like, you're OK, everything's OK. And this year, he was my uh, co-lead. We were doing events together. And we have been planning Make Waves since uh, fall. And we had this entire list of like all these crazy things that we wanted to happen because like other Kenneth was talking about, Kenneth loved make waves. And this year he was like, he was like, we're having a band, we're having a band, and we're having a band. And mm -hmm. I know that he would just be really excited. And I did get like the pleasure of 
just talking with him um, a couple of days before he passed, and I hadn't seen him since last quarter, and I told him that I missed him and that I loved him, and I'm really happy that he was able to hear those words, and I told him that I'd see him soon, and he told me I, that he was too scared to feel my wrath if I didn't, so <laughs> yeah, I my heart goes out to you guys, and I have a younger brother, and I couldn't imagine, and I thank you for bringing such a beautiful, wonderful, special person to this world. So I think now I'm going to wrap things up unless anyone has anything. So I started by saying this is both incredibly sad and but also joyful, right? And, and you guys, thank you all for sharing your stories and bringing that joy, right? This, there were certainly tears, but there was a lot of laughter in here. So, so thank you all very much. Um, thank you to the to the university, um, especially to, to, to Joy, the dean, to the dean, for all of the support she's given us over these last few days. And uh, thank you all for, for sharing your stories. And I want to emphasize one thing that, that my brother Ben said at the end there, which is we keep looking out for each other, right? This is, I know, as I said, I have not yet process this um, and it's going to be a long time and so please you know reach out to each other all of you you know share share Kenneth's love reach out to each other and watch out for each other not just in the coming days but weeks and months and, and even you know years from now and you know think of Kenneth and keep his traditions going just you know, take these wildflowers and let's spread those. And I think as Dylan just said, you know, sow them with love. So thank you all very much. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> 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 